All right, so I, I think um, Kevin's presentation really solidified the fact that we are here to stay. We're here to stay as witnesses of Christ, and looking at that building, holy cow, I really think that's what it's going to do for the next 75 plus 100 years. So, next, I'd like to invite up Jude, Jude Warner. Um, he is, this is his sixth year as the development director, or the director of development for the Newman Center. He is also a University of Nebraska Lincoln alumnus. He works with Father Mattia and Kevin on all facets of the projects, including land acquisition, city approvals, budgeting, design, and coordinating the Newman Center's $25 million capital campaign. With his wife, Stephanie, he has two sons, Joseph and Leo, and a new baby on the way. Congratulations. And prior to working at the Newman Center, June ran a landscape design company for nine years and served and volunteered with numerous youth ministry programs around the city and the diocese. So everybody, please welcome up Jude Warner. It feels like I was just up here. Thanks. <laughs> Well, first of all, I want to say thank you. Thank you for coming. Um, there's a lot of cool things going on on campus, I'm sure, but I'm glad you guys decided to share the night with us. And thank you for coming to the Newman Center and allowing me to get to know you guys a little bit. So, I, uh, I wasn't as bright as some as you guys are in college. I didn't find the Newman Center. Kevin said he found it. His wife may have helped him. Um, I never found my way to the Newman Center. I was in East Campus, and I stayed over there. I hid over there, and, and I went to church on the other side of town, but I wasn't as a, I was a little thick-headed, and I wish I would have found my way to the Newman Center like you guys did. But I've been here for six years, or going on six years, and I've, and I've loved every bit of it. I've got to watch the Phi Caps grow. I've got to spend some, some great moments with the sorority ladies over the weekend and celebrate some great accomplishments for them. I uh, get to work with a dear friend, Jim Jansen, uh, godfather to one of my sons, and, and watch the Focus program go, and really watch a lot of cool things happen. Uh, traveling the state, traveling around the country with Father Mattia is, is a huge privilege, uh, something I wake up every day and say that I'm blessed to be a part of and, and share that time with him. Uh, so thank you for letting me be a part of this. Um, we were sitting at lunch today um, with his father and, and Lori Vosh. You guys probably know Lori. She's a bookkeeper. Uh, she's been here for 37 years, so she's a very faithful lady. Uh, so Father and Lori are on one end of the table, and in the middle of the table is Peter Martin and Father Holden and myself and, and Carrie. And we're all kind of maybe just a little bit younger. Uh, Lori's been at the Newman Center longer than I've been alive. So we were, we were just talking about... Uh, <laughs> But that, that's a compliment to her. She's very faithful. We're talking about TV shows. Um, and Sarah Bronzo, I think you know Sarah. She's, a, she's part-time. She's a student. Um, she's sitting kind of in the middle. We're talking about TV shows we like. And Peter and Father Holden are like, yeah, Airwolf. Man, that was, that was the show. And Knight Rider. And, and Sarah's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, dude, man, that was the 80s. That was, I rock. Those are, those are the shows the guys grew up watching. And Father and Lori and the other end of the table saying, we watch Bonanza and... <laughs> Which I think was in black and white when it originally ran the first time. Um, so certainly different generational uh, gaps there. So we got thinking about, you know, I take for granted the fact that I'm actually a little bit older than some of you guys. And I forget, I start talking about, I use my cool 80s lingo, and you're like, whoa, you are out there. Uh, so I forget that there's sometimes some differences. And sometimes we can take those for granted. Uh, I was at the university from 1993 to 1997, and I was here during the, one of the most remarkable times of the university's history. Uh, I was part of the Tom Osborne era, you know, and most of you guys uh, were like six or seven uh, when I was in college. But I'll tell you what, Tom Osborne, uh, from 19, or 1973, shortly before I was born, in 1997, when he was here, he went, and this is remarkable, 255 wins and 49 losses, 84%. He is the best winning average of any Nebraska football coach, fifth best in NCAA history. Absolutely incredible guy. When I was a student, he went 60 and 3 in football. And then there was Callahan. <laughs> but 60 and 3. We never lost when I was on campus, not because I had anything to do with it. Although, I was the center for Matt Turman, who was the third string quarterback, who played one game once, so, and, you know, I take a little credit. Um, <laughs> but 60 and three, we won Big 12 championships, like five out of six years, and we won three national championships. It was absolutely remarkable. And I took it all for granted. It's like, we always win. You know, I never went to a single bowl game. I never went to a single championship game. Dude, we always win. I'll go next year. We're going to win one championship again next year. I so took it for granted because it was, it's a program, 60 and 3 over five years will probably 
if ever be, ne probably never be repeated again. And I took it for granted. I didn't see how cool it really was when I was here. Um, I said I was a little thick-headed. But, but I was fortunate enough, I did have enough, enough sense, and at the same time, I went to Denver. Uh, John Paul II came out for World Youth Day, and I got to see something really cool there. Even more remarkable than Tom Osborne was John Paul II. After that, I, I was hooked. You know, he, he's, and obviously this whole year is, is the theme about John Paul II. It's called Do Not Be Afraid. And when he spoke that to me, when I was in, in Denver uh, back in 93, those words are huge. Those words are carrying me through a $25 million project right now. Um, and then two World Youth Days later, after going to Rome and Toronto, I realized that, you know what, I may have failed to appreciate just how cool the Tom Osborne era was, but I'm part of the JP2 generation, and that's even better. That's even cooler. And what I don't want you guys to do is to miss out right now. You guys are all involved in the Newman Center, in a Bible study, in intramurals, the fraternity, or sorority on campus, doing lots of cool stuff. Don't miss out how cool this really is. You know, nationally, there's like 1,800 Newman Centers or Newman Clubs around, the, around the, the country. A lot of them are like Colorado State, that Dr. Hecker talked about, even today. Um, a lot of them are small. There's nothing going on. There's a 25 school waiting list just to get a focused missionary or two to come. We've got 13 of them. We are so incredibly spoiled here. 60 and 3, that was cool. 500 students in Bible study, that's really cool. So don't take this time for granted. This is an amazing time. Um, and with, you know, to whom much is given, much is expected. You guys have all heard that from Scripture a little bit. So that's what Mary talked about. To whom much is given. You guys are given so many great opportunities now. A lot is expected from you in return. Kevin brought this slide up. We're going to switch over to this just a little bit. Tell you a little bit about how we're going to spend this $25 million. Um, the church itself, $17 million to build the Newman Center and the church. We're going to take our square footage uh, from what it is today, 26,000 square feet, and double it to 52,000 square feet. It will be... Um, a church that seats 650 plus. Um, Father, we double the size of everything. Double the offices, double the church, quadruple the bathrooms, double Father's decks, <laughs> all the important stuff. Uh, I even get a little bit bigger office too. Land acquisition, you know, this was a remarkable deal. The, 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 the lot next door was extremely fair, but we're still buying on campus. So it cost us over two and a half million to buy the land. Um, although Jim's my best friend, I, you know, it's like I couldn't bring myself to cut his job out. So we decided we need to put something into fun focus and all the great programming. We've been, we've got some great friends in other Newman centers around the country that have gone through similar expansions, and they had this great problem, but they didn't handle this quite quite the same way we are. They did this great expansion project. They built these huge buildings, but they ran out of money to pay for the programs that were filling it, and so they got done and they cut all the programs and they had a big church and it was empty. We said, well, that's kind of silly, so we better fund focus and all these great things that are happening during this, the project. So we've got a couple million dollars for ministry support, um, a little bit to put down in the fraternity and sorority. For the most part, their room and board will pay off the loan to build that. Um, I get to hang out with really cool young people like you, but sometimes to see people that are a little bit older, like your grandparents' age, for some of them, they like to leave us money in their will. So that's what a deferred gift is. They say, you know what, I'm almost, I'm almost two feet in the ground already. Why don't I just give you some money when I pass away? Then it costs a little bit of money for us to run the, to run the campaign. So it's $25 million <coughs> investment. It's a huge investment. So far, we've raised uh, just short of $7 million over the last year. Um, we've traveled all over the Midwest. Uh, we were just out in uh, DC last week. We're heading down, heading to Houston and then and Dallas next week. We're talking to all kinds of people, and there's a lot of people that are really excited and then I often get the question, well, what are the students doing? Especially the, the people that, were, that are alums here that used to do fundraising products. And they'd, they'd clean the vanity after football games. They'd sit up till 2 in the morning cleaning. And, and Father Matias is so nice he doesn't make you do stuff like that. They said, well, what are the students doing? Are they, do, they, do they care? Are they getting behind it? And I'm really proud to be able to tell them not only about the great Bible studies and the great fraternity and sorority and intramurals and, and all the cool things. They say, you know what? Yeah, they, they get it. And they care. Not only the giving on Sunday, not only helping at Champions Club, but so far we've had just about 90 students that have made personal pledges of support to make a personal commitment to this project. And they've given, those 90 students 
have given almost $100,000 to this project. That's what I'm here to talk to you about tonight. To whom much is given, much is expected. And you guys have this great opportunity now. Even cooler than the championships, you've got what's going on here. You've got the great experiences that you have. And your kids, your grandkids, they might be here as well. Um, I want to tell you a little story about the, the, the gift that I'm most proud of receiving. We've gotten um, a gift of $1.2 million from somebody. We have a couple people waiting to hear back from the gifts of $2 million or more. Um, the pledge that I'm most proud of getting. So every day I go home and I take my watch off, take my glasses off, take my wallet off, empty all my keys out, and throw my change on the dresser. So I just always throw it down. Next day I get dressed, I pull all that stuff up, and the change is gone. I don't take any of it. My wife's cleaned up and go to work. Next day, same routine. This, this change always just disappears. Um, I don't know. I see my wife's cleaning up. The vacuum sucks it up or something like that. So I send Joseph and Leo. They're really big into this project. They get it. Um, they came to me once about a year ago and said, you're building us a church, Dad. So it's for the college kids. And I said, no, no, you're building us a church, Dad. I said, yeah, this is your church. And, and you can come here anytime you want, whether you're in kindergarten or in junior high or in high school or when you're a college student. But you just got to share it with the other college kids, okay? They say, that's our church. So one day recently, about two weeks ago, my son, who's three, brought me a bag, a bag full of change, and said, Dad, we want to help build the church. Here's our money. Can we give this to the church? I took it to the bank, turned it in. They had s stolen. <laughs> <laughs> they had stolen 30 bucks from me <laughs> and change over the weeks. And because we, we, we really try to instill stewardship in our kids, right before I went to leave, my oldest son goes, he reaches and grabs a handful and goes, but this is for college, Dad. I'll put this in my bank. So he goes back and puts it in his bank. And there's still $30 left. So the gift I'm most proud of is from a three-year-old boy named Leo and a five-year-old boy named Joseph. And they each gave $15 that they stole from me <laughs> to help build their church because they can't wait to get here. They can't wait to watch the bulldozer knock it down, but they can't wait to be here. <laughs> because they get it. And it doesn't matter if you're, we have a student that, that came, sat down with me last year and said, you know what, I'm here every day. I don't have a job. I'm barely putting myself, you know, barely making my rent. I'll give you a dollar a month. So whether you're giving a dollar a month or you're stealing $30 from your parents, <laughs> <laughs> or you're one of those people that can write us a $2 million check, it doesn't matter. To whom much is given, much is, is expected. And you guys have an opportunity to do something not because I need it. You know, we've raised $7 million. We're, we're a long ways from this $25 million. I got great job security. You know what? And, if, and, it's, and I sat down with donors and I said, you know what? Our students are going to give 1%. That's their goal. Students can give 1%. $250,000 is a, a realistic goal from the students. And then if you guys can cover the other 99%, I know our students will come up with 1%. And it's not that... That $250,000 saves me a ton of work because, you know what, this is going to take a little while anyways. It's not just so I can go brag the fact that you guys have given that much money. It's because you guys need, for your own sake, to be able to give something back because it's good for you. It's healthy. Um, I want to challenge each of you to consider a gift, whether it be tonight or this coming Sunday. We're going to have a chance at, at church or over the coming weeks. You can come find me. Consider a gift of $1,000. To the church. A lot of people are like, whoa. $4 a week. Lamar's across the street sucks somehow, sucks $4 out of my wallet every week after a holy hour for a cup of coffee. I don't tell my wife. <laughs> but somehow I make it over there and I blow four bucks every week for a cup of coffee and a donut and don't think any anything about it. $4 a week over five years. Most of you guys are going to hang out here for five years. And even if you're ready to graduate, what a great chance to give back. $4 a week over five years is a $1,000 gift. 55 cents a day to help build not only a church that you can be a part of, or maybe if you're not, that your kids, your younger siblings, your grandkids, Joseph and Leo, can be a part of. Um, we've got all kinds of cool opportunities. Last year, there's a lot of people already made pledges. As I said, you've already got 90 students that made a pledge. We, um, 
I just got to come up with a gimmick. So last week we came up with this opportunity for you. Uh, great big dinner last fall. Who went to the dinner last year? Husker Catholic Live. Pretty cool. Thumbs up. Decent meal. All your parents got to pay 100 bucks to come. We let you guys come for free. If you make a commitment to the project, even $5 a month, $5 a month, that's like $1.25 a week. If you could commit even $5 a month, come to the dinner for free. Do that over five years, come to the dinner for free. If you made that commitment last year, if you made any pledge last year, just increase it by another $5 a month, come to the dinner for free. I talked to a kid, um, the one here actually, and said, hey, what did you, you do last year? He said, yeah, I gave $4 a week is what I pledged, sixteen sixty-seven a month, $4 a week. I said, do you think about it? He goes, no, I don't even think about it. It comes out of my paycheck, or it comes out of my checking account, I don't think anything about it. I said, bump it up another five bucks. God's bless you a lot more. Give a little bit more back. Get, grow just a little bit more. Stretch a little further. I can do that. What's another five bucks? I won't think anything of it. So tonight, when this is over, we're going to let Father talk for a while. He's going to really kind of um, be the crescendo for the night. Um, but there's going to be an opportunity. I'll be in uh, the glass office back there. Sarah's in the corner office. Uh, Carrie's going to be back here. Nikki will be upstairs. You can pick who you like better. Sit down, visit with us for a few minutes. Um, there's some envelopes in that. If you can do a one-time gift of just a dollar, just so you know, I did something to give back to my church because it gave a lot to me. Um, it would be good for you. It would help us out a lot, but it would be good for you, most importantly. Um, thank you very much for this great opportunity to be here to, to work with you, to serve you. Um, it's a real privilege. Uh, I'm going to finish with 2 Corinthians 9.16. Remember this, whomever sows sparingly will reap sparingly. Whomever sows generously will reap generously. Focus missionaries, Father Mattia, Father Holdren, Peter, Marlene, all the great student leaders here, all of you that have committed, you guys have given so much of your time and your prayer and your energy and your heart, and we're reaping the rewards of it right now. That's why we have these great problems. Do the same thing in stewardship, and God's going to bless us in a huge fold, and we'll get to that $25 million before you know it. So, thank you very much, and I'll pass it over to my friend.